does cyclohexanone, that is cyclohexane with a double bonded oxygen on one of the carbons, have a tautomer? The answer is yes, because you have a carbonyl group, that's C with a double bonded oxygen, and a hydrogen on the adjacent or alpha carbon. Now the way that tautomerization works is that the hydrogen on the alpha carbon can sometimes be found attached to the oxygen of that ketone or carbonyl that forms a double bond between the carbon and the alpha, well, the carbon of the carbonyl and the alpha carbon, and everything else stays as it is. So it kind of looks like, uh, like a cyclohexene with an alcohol group. Oh, wait, that's why it's called an enol. Uh, get it? And you, when you are thinking about the chemistry of cyclohexanone, you have to consider this enol as a possible reactive species. That's not because a lot of this becomes this. In fact, the data that I've seen says that when you have cyclohexanone in a mixture, about a one in a million of those molecules at any one moment become this. But this is a very reactive molecule because you have an alkene now, not just a carbonyl. And so perhaps those one in a million alkene configurations end up colliding with another molecule at just the right angle to react. One in a million is not rare enough in chemistry to say it never happens. So the answer is uh, yes, there is a tautomer of cyclohexanone, and here it is. If you're asked to name that, well, you've got a cyclohex group that you always had, but it is ene, and you have an alcohol group on it as well. Most people are going to get away with calling this cyclohexene all, but you may have to specify for the people that either the double bond or the alcohol group is on carbon number one. The way that I would personally prefer that is to call it cyclohexene one all. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.